To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon. Whenever you want to buy a product or service and when you go to the market to buy it, what kind of conversation goes into your mind? Say for example, you want to buy a mobile phone or for that matter, even when you were buying this particular course online, what went into your mind or what kind of conversation happened in your mind? Say you wanted to buy a mobile phone and you went to a shop and you asked what is the price of the mobile phone. The shopkeeper quoted a price of 5000 rupees. Now, when the shopkeeper quoted a price of 5,000 rupees, you started thinking, is this phone really worth 5,000 rupees for me? Should I actually pay 5,000 rupees and buy this mobile phone? Is this phone worth 5,000 rupees? What is the value of the phone? Now, this kind of question starts coming into your mind. This may be a conscious or a subconscious conversation, but anytime you want to buy something, the first question which comes to your mind is, is the product worth 5,000 rupees? And in your mind, you had a conversation which said, this product is actually worth 7,000 rupees. Now, the moment you felt that the product is worth 7,000 rupees, available at 5,000 rupees, and you have the money to pay for that, you go ahead and buy the product. Now, what is the value you assign to the product? You assigned a value of 7,000 rupees for the mobile phone. How much was the price you paid for the mobile phone? You paid only 5,000 rupees. That is why whenever there is a sale that happens, more and more customers tend to buy. Now, the 7000 is the value that you have assigned and 5000 is the price that you have paid. For you, 2000 is the surplus because the utility is 7000, the price charged is 5000, value that you have perceived minus the price that you paid. This 2000 rupees is called consumer surplus, the surplus which is available to a consumer. Now to produce this mobile phone, maybe the company had carried out number of activities, many primary activities, secondary activities and the company incurred a cost of 4000 rupees. The cost to the company to create this particular product is 4000 rupees. The company charged a price of 5000 rupees. Now 4000 and 5000, how much is the profit for the company? 1000 rupees is the profit for the company. Now in this entire example, if you see, 7000 is the value assigned means you are willing to pay up to 7000 rupees and if the company wishes the company may quote a price of 7000 rupees and you may still buy the product so 7000 minus 5000 this 2000 rupees is the surplus that is available to the consumer or to you and the 1000 rupees is profit that is available to the company now one question which comes is can the company charge 8000 rupees if the company says the price is 8000 rupees, you will say, I am not interested to buy because for me, the value is only 7000 rupees. So, the maximum price a company may charge is 7000 rupees. Now, in this entire range between 5000 to 7000, the company may choose any price for which it will earn certain amount of profit. To quickly recap, there is some portion of cost that is incurred by firm to create a product which we understand as firm's cost of creation of value. This is the cost and there is some value which is assigned by a consumer. So this is the value which is assigned by the consumer to the product. There is some cost, there is a value which is assigned and there is some price which is charged by the company. The difference between the price and the cost, it is the profit margin and that belongs to the shareholders or the investors of the company and the difference between the value that is perceived by the consumer and the price the consumer pays for it or the difference between the perceived value or utility and the price it is called customer surplus now this is a process of value creation the company incurs certain cost and it charges certain price and it tries to deliver more value to the customer than the price that is when the customer will have surplus if there is a negative surplus the customer will not buy the product from the particular company how does the customer compute value is it a mathematical process do you say okay for display i'll pay thousand rupees for batteries i'll pay 500 rupees for camera i'll pay 500 rupees does it work that way it really doesn't work that way a customer perceives what is the quality, what is the durability, what is the feature. Considering all these different features, the customer will feel that 7000 rupees is what is the value. It is not a mathematical competition. It is a competition in the mind which happens consciously or subconsciously, but that is how a customer perceives value. And a firm can charge anywhere between the cost and the customer value. So in this particular range, it can charge any price. If it charges a higher price, it will have higher profits. If it charges a lower price, it will have a lesser profit. But how to decide the price? There will be other factors that will come into picture. What is the competition charging? What is the competition offering? After considering different things around the demand and the supply, the industry condition and all those things, the firm will come at a price. But a price which is less than the value perceived, but more than the cost of value creation. Now, how can companies improve their profit margin? We saw three different factors. One was the cost, 
second was the price and third was the value creation. Now, if a company has to increase its profit, it has to widen the gap between the cost and the price. Now, can this price go beyond the value? It cannot go beyond the value. It can go maximum to the point of value for the customer. Beyond that, it cannot go because the moment the customer surplus becomes negative, the customer may not buy your product. Now, to increase the profit, this span has to increase and to increase this, if you can add more value to the product or if you can make the customer feel that the product is more valuable, this value keeps on increasing. As the value increases, you can increase your pricing and as you increase the pricing, this margin increases and the profitability increases. But to increase the value, even if your cost is increasing, then you may not be able to actually get more profit because the increase in price is offset by increase in cost and there will be no incremental profit. To improve the profitability, the three things that a company must consider is what is the value assigned by the consumer? How much is the customer willing to pay? That is the customer value. And what is the cost of the firm? And finally, you will decide what is the price. Now, if you can reduce the price, give the same value, your profits will increase. If you can improve the value at the same cost and push the price aside, again, it will add to the value. If you can still increase the price without losing any market share or without losing any customer, still your profits will increase. But these three things will decide what will be the profitability of a company. Let us take some scenarios and understand how this value analysis is useful. Say there are two companies, company A, company B, both produce same product, same line of business, not much difference in the product. Now, the customer value is same in case of both the companies, meaning the customer has perceived, let's say, value of 100 in case of company A, 100 in case of company B. The price that these companies are charging is 60 uh, for company B also with 60. So both the companies are charging 60 rupees. Cost at company A is incurring is rupees 50. Cost at company B is incurring is rupees 40. Now 100, 60, here the cost is 50, here the cost is 40. Now in this case, which company is more profitable? Company B is more profitable. Why is company B more profitable? It has a cost advantage because it is able to give same value to the customer at a lower cost. And when it is charging same price as that of company A, the customer is still getting the same consumer surplus and hence company B will have a cost advantage. Now let us change this example a bit. Because the cost is 40, if company B reduces the price to 50, company A is still charging rupees 60 what will happen? The surplus in case of company B will be increased to 50, whereas the surplus here will still remain to be 40. Now, in this case, which company will the customers choose? Obviously, company B because same value product is available at a lower price. Now, because of a cost advantage, a company may be able to reduce the price and a lower cost gives a cost advantage, which can be a competitive advantage for the company and in the longer run if the other company cannot reduce its price with a lower price and lower cost this company will have a sustainable competitive advantage let us look at another scenario the cost to produce a product is 40 for company a 40 for company b the selling price are 50 50 so 40 is the cost selling price is 50 what is the profit available to the company 10 in both the cases but the product of company b is such that customer assign a higher value. Say the customer assign a value of 120. In case of company A's product, the customer assign a value of only 100. Now, in which case the consumer will have a higher surplus? Here it is 100 minus 50, 50. Here it is 120 minus 50, 70. Where is the surplus higher? Obviously, company B. Now, if company B provides a higher surplus, more customers would want to buy this product because at the same price, the consumer is getting a higher value and the surplus is higher. So even if the costs are same, but if the products are differentiated, if one company can provide a superior product than its competition at the same price, you incurring the same cost, this company will have a competitive advantage because at a lower cost it is providing a higher value. Michael Porter suggested that a company may create competitive advantage or company can gain competitive advantage either through cost advantage that is what we discussed some time back lower cost for same product or through product differentiation same cost but a superior product is available the product that a company is providing is differentiated from that of its competition when either of these two scenario exists a company will have a definite competitive advantage now let's come back to the value chain we said there are a set of activities primary activities and support activities and a company would be incurring certain cost for each of these activities 
Now, is a company able to provide same value that the competition is providing and it is incurring a lower cost? So, if the cost is low, which is a cost advantage, this company will have a competitive advantage. Or, in the entire value chain, are we providing superior value to the customer as compared to our competition, incurring the same cost, then we'll have a product differentiation advantage. Friends, please remember these two terminologies. Competitive advantage according to Porter can be derived either using a cost advantage which means incurring a lower cost but value will not change. You are not giving a lower quality product. Same quality at a lower cost or same value at a lower cost. It's a cost advantage or a superior product at the same cost. It becomes a differentiation advantage. Now why are we stressing on cost and differentiation so much? As we understood some time back, if my costs are equal to that of the competition, and if I am able to provide more value to the customer, I will be in a position to charge a slightly higher price. Let's say company A incurring 40 rupees, company B incurring 40 rupees. Here, the value that the customer perceives is 120. But here, the value that the customer perceives is only 100. So if this company is charging 50, this company may choose to charge 52 or 53 or 55 because it is giving 20 as an additional surplus. When 20 is the additional surplus, you can easily charge 5 or 6 rupees extra. So this gives an advantage. So higher value at the same cost is an advantage. Same value at a lower cost is also an advantage. So Michael Potter said that if a company has a cost advantage or a differentiation advantage, it is likely to have a sustainable competitive advantage.